Thanks so much, Joseph Bernal. I'll be your instructor this semester, and we're going to be going over a course overview on what to expect from the course, how to navigate Canvas, and hopefully answer a lot of questions that you may have. So hopefully you see on your screen um, the syllabus, right? And I'll be looking over here to my right occasionally because I have two screens. So my name, Dan, right there, is Joseph Bernal. My email address is jbrna36 at nmsu.edu. Um, my office, of course, it's online. We're doing this uh, completely remotely. So uh, you can jump in and my office hours are Thursdays and Sundays from two to three, and that's Mountain Standard Time. So that'll be on Zoom uh, via Canvas. So if you just go to uh, the Zoom link on Canvas, and I'll show you bit that in a moment, you'll be able to log in and those times and I'll be there. To answer any questions, you don't have to show your face, of course, you don't have to have your camera on. Um, but I'll be there to help you when you write can. Now, what we're going to be talking about this semester is ethics. And so we have a lot to cover and a lot of interesting topics to discuss. Our textbook, and I had provided a, a photo on Canvas as well, the textbook, so, so you know which textbook. But the official information is here. It's the Ethical Life fourth edition by Oxford University Press, and it's written by, uh, or consolidated by Schaefer Landau, who is a prominent American philosopher. It's relatively cheap. I have a copy here. It's not very big as you can see, but there's a lot of ingredients in it. I think, of course, there are newer versions uh, newer editions, uh, but the fourth edition is the one that we're going to be using. You can either use the um, bookstore, the NMSU bookstore, uh, or you can find it online pretty easily. Uh, used copies are pretty regularly available, so you're welcome to take a look at that. Um, there are other editions. I would use the fourth because some of the readings change from edition to edition. So some might be missing another edition. So try to use the fourth edition. Uh, and I've kept it the fourth edition to kind of keep down costs. So you're not having to spend so much. So objectives overall in general, you can read it in detail in the syllabus, but what I'm looking for is to help develop a broader understanding of what ethics is about. It's a topic we don't usually talk about in uh, regular primary school. So, you know, elementary school, high school. Um, some high schools I know are trying to do ethics now, but uh, for the most part, most uh, schooling like that in the United States doesn't really include ethics. So this is kind of what the crash course and introduction into what ethics is about. And something I sh think should be taught much earlier, but, Hopefully, you can get a broader understanding. Um, we can't go into deep, deep detail about any particular topic because this is, again, an introduction. But as long as you get a general understanding, and I want you to be able to articulate and express yourself in written word, and so that this is also the practice in general, not just for this class, and it's a very valuable skill to do that. So there will be some writing uh assignments here and we'll go into detail what that's going to include now there is some basic stuff that you should be familiar with with online courses in canvas if you're not i did provide some links in the modules to help you out uh, but you should be able to navigate uh, to find basic stuff like the quizzes, uh, readings, uh, announcements, things like that. And I'll go over some of that stuff uh, when I flip over to the Canvas screen. 
Now I'm sure everybody's wondering well, what are the assignments, right? So you're going to have 12 discussion posts and 12 participation responses. So you're going to respond to your peers' uh, discussion posts, of course. Now the discussion posts, I've been teaching a while now, and I know a lot of students tend to try to kind of rush it or fudge some of these discussion posts and say, oh, that's a really great or interesting idea, and then that's it. That's all they write. Um, to kind of like overcome some of that, what I've done is um, made it a mandatory requirement that when you post something, and these are the type of deep questions that are going to require some real thinking, some real um, consideration, and some lengthy responses. So in general, what I'm asking for, at least three paragraphs when you respond to the questions that uh, posted for that week. I'm sure with some of these are gonna be much deeper questions and will require more thought than just three paragraphs, but at the very minimum, it should be at least three paragraphs. If you don't provide at least three paragraphs, then your, your grade will suffer for those discussion posts. Um, and as for the responses, again, great sort of empty responses. Uh, when I first started teaching online, and I've learned from that, at least two paragraphs in your responses to others. This is a learning environment. It's an online learning environment, which is difficult. It's kind of not, we don't have the advantage of being able to talk to each other face to face all the time and exchange ideas and stuff and get to know each other in the same way that we're accustomed to. So these discussion posts and the responses are kind of filling in what would be our class time, what would be our interactions, our daily interactions. So use those, be helpful with each other. Um, you know, if somebody had a good idea, like tell them why it was a good idea or how that helped them out. Or, you know, if somebody was kind of off on an idea and said, well, wait a minute, I think you need to take a closer look, you know, uh, constructive criticism is something that I highly encourage in this course. Uh, this is a philosophy course, there's a lot of debate, a lot of uh, controversial issues, so we're going to cover that. But taking that into consideration, also consider um, there's some basic netiquette rules that I've provided here. You know, um, be respectful, don't attack the person. It's more what I like here, I've stated, uh, question the ideas, not the people. It's not really a personal attack about somebody. What you're really discussing are the ideas. And if the spell student is kind of off on the idea, you're helping them, you know, you're helping each other out really, you know, marking that idea and kind of getting a better understanding rather than just saying, oh, you're stupid, you're not fun. That's not really the type of discussion I'm looking for. So keep in mind those type of things. Now, the next assignment is going to be a group PowerPoint. I know a lot of students hate group assignments, right? And we'll talk about that later when we get to social contract theory about, you know, some people try to get away without doing the work, right? Like wanting to get the credit. That is something that we've discussed at Ethics a lot. But I also think it's a necessary skill to learn to work with each other, even, you know, over, I mean, I've had my own situations in, in, as a student and as a professional, working with other people is not always easy. It's usually difficult. So it's a skill that we need practice with and, and something that we should work on. But it's a very simple assignment here, so I don't want to make it overly stressful for anybody as well. It's what you're going to do with your group, and your group has already been designated. I've already picked out the groups, and you can find them on Canvas, and I'll show you where in a minute. What you're going to do with the group is develop a PowerPoint over that particular week's reading. So I designated each group is going to have one week in the semester to provide a PowerPoint. So that means you don't have to do all the weeks, just the group is responsible for you for one week in the entire semester. And you're going to create a very simple but very straightforward PowerPoint because I do have students all the time every semester ask me, you know, 
oh, can I get a copy of the PowerPoint? I said, well, why? You know, is it kind of saves you time on reading? You don't have to like open the book and you're hoping that like whatever I say in this PowerPoint is going to be helpful, you know, instead of like stand in for reading. Um, the problem with that is that you don't remember things as much, right? It's difficult to kind of recognize and remember somebody else's ideas. Rather, it's a lot easier when you develop something for yourself. So I think this is also a good exercise in learning to do what I've done as instructor for many years, summarize these very complicated chapters and they're easy to understand, you know, reference on the PowerPoint that you can go back to and refer. It's almost like taking notes. So I want you guys to be able to practice to do that. And of course, I've noticed, you know, teaching many years that students also become a bit of the expert on that chapter, right? You, you and your team have spent so much time working together and bringing together this PowerPoint that, you know, you become a bit of an expert on that topic. And I think that's really helpful and it benefits you later in the class and with the other assignments, which we're talking about right now. And so you're going to work together and you're going to, and then there's a leader that's already designated in Canvas and they're going to submit the PowerPoint on the due date. And we'll go over those, the schedule of due dates and all that in a bit. And then there's another side too, and I know this is kind of to cover, you know, who you feel has been responsible, who's not, and this is where you can kind of give me feedback and let me know what's been going on, right? And it's really important in teamwork is actually letting like the manager or letting the professor myself know you know, where you guys at, you know, who's been doing what, how productive have you guys been. And you're going to do that in a report. So I've already uh, created a template and you're just going to simply download the template and fill it out at the end when you're ready to submit to the PowerPoint. And in that, you can identify, you know, who was responsible for what, what were the dates, you know, when was everybody supposed to get their stuff in, uh, who was, you know, doing their part, who is not. That's, and that's a private matter. And so each member of the group is going to submit a copy of that template to me. Um, and that's going to be part of your grade. And I'm going to be looking over that uh, by I grade the PowerPoint itself as well. So to kind of like go over real quick, the group PowerPoint, only one person has to submit it, the group leader. Uh, but the report is something that each member of the group has to uh, provide a report at the end. And then quizzes. So of course there will be quizzes. Um, there are going to be 12 quizzes in particular. And they're not too difficult, uh, but they do require that you went over the text. Um, you spend time thinking about this stuff. So they're going to be timed. They're 15 minutes. Um, they usually consist of multiple choice or fill in the blank, uh, things that you can quickly answer. Uh, they'll go over that text for that. There'll be uh, material, I guess, based because they'll be over that particular week's reading. That's what the quiz will be about. So let's take an example. Uh, quiz one, it will open up on January 17th at 7 a.m. And it will close on January 24th of, at 11 p.m. So anytime in that time span, you're welcome to take the quiz. I give you two chances to take the quiz, and I'll give you the highest score out of the two. So let's say you took the quiz on January 18th, for example. Now you didn't do too well. You think you could have done better. Go back, study, reread the stuff. Come back, let's say we take it on the 23rd and you get a better score and I'll take the better score. So give yourself some time. It's try to be flexible, but at the same time, I do expect you to go over the material to be well-versed enough where you can provide answers uh, quickly if you're familiar enough to answer basic questions. 
in a multiple choice format or something like that. So you'll see the schedules up there and all the dates are already set. That's why also uh, when we get to the issue of late work, I usually don't accept late work because I've uh, given you, I feel, like enough time, heads up on what to expect and what dates everything is due. So if there's an emergency or something like that, let me know. Notify me as soon as possible before, if you can. Uh, don't make the mistake that other students have done where they tell me two weeks afterwards. It's due, oh, by the way, I put it, it's like, well, why didn't you tell me that two weeks before, right? Or when it happened and not uh, wait for the last minute. And then there are two last assignments. There'll be a midterm exam and they'll consist of multiple choice, short answer, long answer. And what you're going to do is you're going to submit those via Canvas. What I've asked is that you write your answers beforehand. When you're working on the exam, you can type them into Microsoft Word page. So you can save your answers as a backup. So just in case your computer crashes, you were typing or something, you know, have them saved on a work file. And then when you're ready, submit them. You can copy your answers and paste them into uh, the Canvas section and submit the question the answer. I think that's the best way to go about it. And the same thing with the final. The final is going to be a similar exam like that. And those are both going to be worth 20%. So a large chunk of your grade. Uh, there will be, the final is not going to be comprehensive. It's going to be everything from the midterm to the end of the class. And the midterm, of course, is everything from the beginning to that date. So there's a breakdown there, what's expected in the course and where you're going to get your percentages from. So large percentages are coming from the quizzes, um, the midterm, and the final. Now, regular grading schedule or, I mean, system, right? Um, anything below 69 or anything like that is an D and then Anything below 59 is now. Like I said, with late work, uh, I don't use except late work for makeup work unless, of course, it is a serious emergency. Contracted COVID, something's happened like that. Please let me know as soon as possible. Or have a family member notify me or something. If it's you're in the hospital, you're unable to do so. Uh, don't just assume that, you know, well, I haven't heard from you, so I think everything's okay. Let me know. Keep, me, uh, keep in touch with me as, as well, as best as you can. So I can help you. Um, not here to punish you, I'm here to help you, but uh, also keep in mind, uh, don't abuse that. And like I said, show up weeks later and tell me, you know, oh, I'm missing this or that. And it's like, well, that was a long time ago. We had plenty of time to know. And then <clears throat> contacting me, excuse me, please make sure that you uh, allow 24 to 48 hours for me to get back to you. Um, at a particular time, usually at 5 p.m., I shut up my computer and everything for the day. So <clears throat> some, most of the time, if you try to contact me afterwards, I won't be able to answer you until the next day. It's only to keep me sane. I remember when I was first teaching online answering questions at all hours of the day, like I was losing it. So um, I think it's trying to structure more like a weekday, uh, a work week where a system where you like clock out at five and then I will address anything the next day. But so allow that period of time for me to get back to you. The schedule, as you can see here, I'm pretty much a stickler to the schedule. You know, some professors are all over the place or kind of don't really follow their own schedule, but I'm I'm pretty dead on with the schedule. So if it says that's what we're doing this week, that's probably what we're doing this week. So check here first uh, before you ask me, you know, what, what are we doing this week? Well, it's probably going to be on the syllabus. So, so for cultural relativism, I'm sorry, so chapter one, 
uh, what is morality. It's not really a chapter, it's more like an introduction you're gonna go, and I'll show you right now. The syllabus, you know, we'll talk a little bit about, you know, expectations and stuff like that. What really starts is uh, week two. This is where we get the material. You'll see the page number there. That's our first reading, Total Relativism by Harry Ginsler. That's what our first topic is going to be about. And that's what our first group uh, is going to be constructing a PowerPoint about. So make sure you're prepared for that. And our first quiz and discussion question will be posted that week as well. I know it's uh, there's always a time period where students are having a hard time getting their books on time. What I've done is I've provided this first reading free as a PDF in our modules. So you can start reading that today right away and be prepared for that. Uh, due to copyright laws, I cannot give you all the book or all the readings for free, of course. But I, I try to give you some space where, you know, you can either order your book and save you from time, but you should have the book by, for sure, week three, of course. And that'll be our second reading, and that'll be Ethics and Observation by Gilbert Carmen, and that's on page 190 of the textbook as well. So, and then you'll see quiz two and discussion question two will be that week. So it's pretty much the same format. You have a quiz and discussion question every week, and that'll go on in the reading until we get to the midterm in about week eight. And that week, I'll leave it open and I'll give you a designated time when you're going to take your midterm. It will be open book, uh, of course, um, but to tell you, like if it's open book, that's going to tell you about something about the type of questions you're going to get. They're not things that you can quickly just look up and copy and paste, they're going to be real uh, critical thinking questions that you're really going to have to consider. It's not something you can just give me quick, easy answers to everything. And after the midterm, we have spring break. So there's that break in there. And then when we come back, we're going to start the, uh, the book again. And I always think that the second half is probably the harder half. You might find it not. You might find the first half harder, maybe. But uh, the readings, I tend to see students struggle more with the second half. So that's, even though I know people are kind of tired, that's where you really have to book them down and really pull all your effort together because we're going to be coming with some heavy ideas and it's going to take a lot of your own energy and more power to get through that. And then a little uh, 15. I've left open some leeway just in case something happens or we kind of shift dates or something. Uh, just say week 16 as the finals week and we'll same thing with the midterm, I'll open it up to a particular time period and you'll have you know that time to work on it. So that's our overall course uh, syllabus. Now let me switch over screens to show you what our canvas looks like. So this is in student view, view and so this is what it should look to, like for you. I've organized the course into modules. I think it works best that way when I have week one, week two, I think it's easier to follow on your own since we're working online. What are some things you should complete in the first week? So these are basic stuff I want you to go over and make sure that you're familiar with. So where you should start is just come to week one, click on the Welcome to Philosophy page, and you'll see a little introduction on what to expect and what I'm looking for for the class and what you need to do this week. Uh, objectives, so this is what you should accomplish by the end of the week. Uh, readings, and so here, give you, of course, go over the syllabus in detail. Uh, you're welcome to start reading right away. 
as I mentioned, that I provided the first reading as a PDF. And then uh, make sure to go over the group PowerPoint assignment directions and report assignment directions as well. Get together with your group, start talking with your group, discussing them. And this video, I'll, I'll provide any lectures right there and I'm done. And then activities, uh, introduce yourself in the discussion board. It's not for grade, this is just, you know, to get to know each other, that's our first. Uh, and become familiar with using discussion boards if you're not familiar already. Contact your group members, make sure you start talking to, to each other right away. You can do that uh, easily because you can send messages to other group members in Canvas. Um, what else? Also take the practice quiz. So I've provided the practice quiz. It doesn't count against you either. So before we take the real quizzes, we start taking the real quizzes next week. Uh, I want you to take a practice quiz, familiarize yourself with it. You know, how Canvas works and taking a quiz. And so it's a kind of a funny, silly quiz I put together. It doesn't count against you. Just something so you're more comfortable once we get to the actual quiz. And then what are you going to do next? Well, here I've tried to make it easy. You just hit the next button, the bottom. And here I'll discuss uh, some basic overall, what the structure is, what the assignments. I've kind of talked a little bit about this already. But this is for your information to go back to in case you forgot something I said. And then the next page, you'll see there's a copy of the syllabus uh, as well, and anything that you need to go back to, dates or anything like that. Uh, technical information requirements. But this is about, you know, making sure that you're able to navigate an online course. I, these are some basic things you should have. Probably a fast speed, high reliable internet connection. That's, I don't want you to lose connection or reception. If you're trying to do it at a Starbucks or something like that. When you're trying to take an exam, that's not the best format. Uh, if you're having trouble, let me know. I think there's a lot of resources actually to help students to make sure that you all have the right connection so that you can do your assignments and that's not. Uh, this course, I did mention, it's not a course that you can do off your phone. It's very tempting, I know, to use your smartphone, you know, but uh, I know a little bit about this because I, I think I mentioned in my own introduction that I uh, have a degree in computer programming, IT, and so I know a little bit about uh, how to format things online between a app and a, let's say, regular sort of laptop browser and stuff like that. Very different. So I wouldn't trust just because it works on the PC or on your laptop, it's going to be the exact same thing on your phone. Don't necessarily make that mistake. So make sure when you do all your assignments, you know, you're doing so from a, a laptop or a desktop computer. And then any sort of resources you know, might need or provided, like I say, you know, the links are there. Uh, a little bit more detail on the medical rules, but um, you know, what's allowable, what's not allowable. Like I said, uh, in general, I think the, the best heuristic is question the ideas, not the person, right? We're not directly attacking people. What we're doing is questioning ideas. And I think that's the best way to overall kind of address a lot of issues. And here, we've already started, you see, some people have already posted. So you're gonna do your introductions. And once you do your introductions, uh, look over the PowerPoint assignment. Here I have instructions. And if you scroll down, you'll see 
what week and what group will be presenting on what topic, what their PowerPoint should be about. How do you find your group? I mentioned here, just go to people and you're gonna to go to the tab. I'll show you right now. Go to groups. And then you'll see the PowerPoint team there. And you'll just click down and you'll identify who you're with. And you can message them, I think, directly from here. So let's go back to modules real quick. And then we'll take a look as well at the individual report. So there's a copy here, which you're gonna download. And you're gonna fill this out when you're ready to submit it when your team finally submits their PowerPoint. You're gonna individually submit this and you're gonna fill in any issues, what you accomplished, who was responsible for what. And that again, part of your grade. And so you can always come back here to this page for assignments to, to do that. And then finally take the practice quiz. It's silly, but it's really helpful just to get you into the idea of how to take a quiz online. And then if we come back to the modules, you'll see I had things set up for week two. This is the sort of format you're gonna be going, structure of the class. Go to, to the agenda for week two two and then the next week, week three will open up and you'll see what you have to do, look over it, uh, provide uh, information on what you're supposed to read, uh, also links for the assignments for that week. And that's how we'll usually carry out. Now for office hours, you're gonna go to Zoom, which you see the link here on the left-hand side. And I already have uh the time so thursday and sunday as i said at two um mountain center time you're going to join just click in and join and i'll be there to answer any questions that you have and again you don't have to show your cam or anything like that um that's not mandatory i'm just here to help as best as i can so i think that's it i wish you guys a lot of luck this semester and here I'm here to help you. That's not here to want to fail anybody. But I'm here is actually as a guide uh, to make this the best experience as I can possible. So uh, let me know and have a great semester.